Hello, this is Robert Love Chat, and today's topic is Can No Contact Backfire? Now, this is video number 231. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the channel, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoyed these videos, I would be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Now, I am going to be doing a sale on all coaching services except emergency coaching. It starts today and it ends March 1st. So how do you get the sale? Well, simple. You go to my website, you type in the coupon code TLC, as in the love chat, TLC2020, as in the year 2020. So let's talk about can no contact backfire. Now, after a breakup, things get kind of tricky because you're going through a period of anxiety and there's no rules to breakups. You know, there's no code of conduct. It's just sort of we separate and we don't talk to each other as much. And for a lot of people, that's really tricky because we're not quite sure what to do. And here comes this idea, no contact. And no contact, as we know, is founded around several ideas. The first of which is, you are in a period of anxiety, and no matter what you do, it's going to be acting from that anxiety. So get away from your ex while you're super anxious, and allow yourself some time to calm down because you're going to be able to act more attractively. If you throw all of that anxiety at your ex, they're going to push you away to the point of blocking you. And in some cases, I've even heard of people having the police called. So let's not get ourselves to that point. That's the first part. The second part is give your ex some time to miss you because they've probably, in 95% of the cases I've heard, had way too much of you. They are not worried at all about you in their life and your availability. You're nothing if not available and abundant. So why should they ever miss you? The third is you need some time to work on yourself because you probably made your ex the most important thing in your life that you had going on. So back away, take some time, do your thing, hit the gym, talk to a counselor, listen to audiobooks, meditate, all that stuff. And it's all very helpful, and it works, and no contact is a healthy option, especially when we're dealing with a situation that is so uncertain, and we don't really know what the right move is, so we go with the move that's the healthiest for us. Back away, focus on you, take good care of you, and this is pretty sound advice. But what if it does the exact opposite thing that we're told it does? Now, I'm going to go ahead and just squash this right now because so many people are anxious and I'm not going to play with your anxiety. No contact is the best option. 99% of the time and the 1% being if you have kids or there's specific reasons you cannot do no contact. Uh, you have a house together, business together. We've talked about this in previous videos. The main worry is can no contact blow up in my face? Will my ex think, oh, okay, fine. You're going to ignore me? Okay, fine. But that's just it. It's not ignoring. If your ex messages you, you do not ignore them. You hold your boundaries. You tell them what you need. You tell them what you deserve. You tell them that you were willing to work on this problem. And if they would like to work on the problem as well, as a team, then, hey, I'm here. Give me a call. If they reach out about something that has nothing to do with relationships, you don't ignore them. Unless it's like nothing to go off of. Unless it's like a random meme at 2 in the morning. What input do I have for you at this point? What am I going to say about the meme that you sent me at 2 in the morning? I don't, I don't really have a response for you. That's not even ignoring. It's just I don't know what to say. Thank you for the meme at 2 in the morning. It's not even a good meme. But what I'm getting at is can no contact make your chances worse? And there are several instances where, yes, it can. But keep listening before you panic. One of those instances... I was mentioning was if you have a partner who's particularly toxic. Now, what does this really mean? Well, consider this. If you have a partner, or I guess in this case, a former partner, who's used to having all of your time, attention, effort, love, all that, and then they basically use up everything you have and then toss you aside, and then finally you take a step back and then you're doing no contact, for some partners, that makes them even angrier. Now, remember the motto of this channel. The motto of this channel is, it's healthy relationships, not any relationships. 
I am here to help people get healthier, better quality relationships that will actually last, right? And then you might get married and the marriage, you know, doesn't end in divorce because the divorce rate's going up and up every year and that's horrifying. So I'm not interested in helping you win back partners who are bad for you and you shouldn't be either. Now, granted, after a relationship ends, we're thinking anxiously, we've just been rejected. Of course, after a breakup, you want a partner back, even if the partner's not good for you. For some of you, you're like, you know what, I'm just going to take my losses and leave. And for those of you who do that, good on you. But unfortunately, anxiety is a cruel mistress, and it doesn't always work that way, or it's not always that easy, or, you know, whatever. So, it's not good in that situation For your ex to say, oh, you're going to go into no contact, or maybe they don't even recognize it as no contact. You're not going to talk to me. You're not going to message me. Fine, whatever. You can't have me back anyway. But in situations like that, the person is so clearly bad for you that can we even really call it backfiring? Now, there are some instances, and this is number two, there are some instances where a person says after the breakup, They're not messaging me at all. They're not talking to me. They must hate me. I guess the breakup was a good idea. Now, that has, I mean, I've coached thousands of people by this point, and I have only heard of that happening, like, twice. So the numbers are so astronomically small. And even if they do happen, look, we cannot be responsible for every emotion another person feels. We can only be responsible for the emotions that we feel. And if somebody breaks up with you and tells you, sorry, I'd rather not work this out. I don't, I'm not interested. I'm done. Tapping out. And so for that person to then turn around and have an issue with you exerting some self-control and some boundaries after they told you they weren't willing to work on it, I mean, for me, it's a a no-win scenario, right? They're putting you in a very difficult position where they are expressing to you or maybe not even expressing to you that no contact is hurting them. But honestly, we cannot be beholden to every single whim of another person. At some point, we have to look at ourselves and say, you know what, wait a second, it's you or me. And if no contact is helping preserve my mental health and improve my mental health and get me feeling confident again and not beaten up over you, granted it takes a bit of time, then I'm going to go with no contact. Because what's your other option, folks? To stay in a situation where somebody is not willing to work it out They're not willing to entertain any ideas of getting back together. They're not willing to sit down with a counselor and maybe just explore what could be, explore some of the issues that happened in the relationship. Then what are you left with? Be their friend. And you don't want to be their friend because it's going to hurt you, damage your mental health. It will take you ages to heal because the person's still in your life and you haven't actually made any sort of separation. And for most people who want to be their ex's friend, Well, what do they do? They just secretly be their friend until they perceive that an opening presents itself, and then, oh no, look what happened. They got slapped down. So I guess it's sort of a two-pronged question. You know, is no contact going to backfire? 96, 97% of the time? No, it's not. It's going to work exactly as it's supposed to work. But let's not forget that no contact is and always was for you so that you could grow and become stronger and more attractive and mentally peaceful and all of that stuff that we've discussed in previous videos. But obviously, I'm aware that people come to this channel and they're looking for, all right, yeah, 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 cool. I I can work on me, sure. Is it going to help me get them back? And yeah, same answer. 96, 97% of the time, yes, it will be effective in increasing the likelihood that your ex revisits the idea of a romantic reconciliation with you. Many of you, many, many, many of you have heard from your ex. Does that mean you all get back together? No, but the reasons that you don't get back together are various, and they usually have nothing to do with no contact. So getting at the core idea of this video, will no contact blow up in my face and work against what I wanted to happen? 97, 98% of the time, no, it will not. And I've only heard of a handful of cases in my personal coaching where that's been the case. And even if it is the case, it's usually an unhealthy situation like what I described earlier in this video. So I hope this was helpful. Hope it 
calmed some anxiety, calmed some fear down. And that's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you want me to cover in the future. Additionally, if you'd like private live streams with me and extra videos and a free copy of my best-selling book on Amazon, until next time, just visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash thelovechat. And don't forget, we're doing a discount on all coaching services. Just use the code TLC2020.